Welcome back to Shannon's Club TV, the show for Shannon's Club members and all motoring enthusiasts who are passionate about their cars and motorcycles. Here on the Shannon's Club website, you can find stories from racing historian Mark Osler and I that celebrate cars in Australia for their achievements on the road and in competition. We've appreciated your great feedback on these road and race histories, and now we're featuring them here with some rare historic images on Shannon's Club TV. So let's take a look at a model that established the small block V8 in Australia for not only Chevrolet, but also Holden, the Chevrolet Bel Air and Impala. Before 1960, a market dominated by conservative Australian farmers meant that the plain US Chryslers and Chevrolets built locally came only with six cylinder engines, and they were slow ones at that. Ford offered the only V8, except it was heavy and built for hard work, not speed. But that all changed in 1960. The arrival of the first small block V8 in a local Chevrolet, plus new V8 models from Dodge and Ford, sparked new interest in V8 performance. By 1962, all local US models were trimmer in size. Australians, for the first time, had the choice of several US models that were not only up to date, but they all offered V8 performance and extra luxury. Mark, this was a major shift going on in showrooms around the country in 1962. So was it a coincidence that Norm Beachy imported a Chevy Impala four-door hardtop that year to race? Well, it may have looked like a showroom-linked strategy, but the reason why he went for a four-door body was the local touring car rules at the time that demanded it. But Norm was also looking for big horsepower. He was chasing Jaguars. He wanted big block V8 grunt, and I'll get to that a little bit later on. Yes, but Norm was also very good at picking a car that he'd get good resale for <laughs> so he could buy next year's race car. No wonder he became a car salesman. Well, strict austerity measures and hard currency restrictions in the 1950s meant only a tiny sample of the US Chevrolet range could be sold in Australia. By 1964, Holden was offering a choice of Bel Air and Impala models, all with V8 engines and plenty of style. Their extra V8 performance and long distance comfort combined with better roads prompted many Australians to return to the US models they loved and bought before World War II. This shift was so dramatic that by 1966, Australian cars soon offered the same V8 engines and style. By 1969, all local manufacturers were building luxury V8 alternatives to the US models. Within two or three years, the big US models were gone. They'd been replaced by capable local cars to such an extent that today's biggest and most powerful V8 Chevrolet sedans are made in Australia. Mark, the Lukey Galaxy and Beachy Impala were huge crowd mm. pleasers in 1962 and left a big impression. Coming up shortly, we hit the road with a proud Chevy enthusiast and we get the latest auction updates with Hammer Time. In 1962, Australian touring car great Norm Beachy was trying to break the formidable claw hold that British car maker Jaguar had on local tin top racing since the late 1950s. He found his answer after doing some research in US and European car magazines to see what was winning overseas. A stunning performance at the UK's Silverstone Grand Prix circuit by Dan Gurney in 1961, driving a big block 409 V8 Chevy Impala against the Jaguars, convinced Norm that was the car to have. Beachy imported the latest 1962 model Impala 409 in a pillarless four-door body style. The latest version of the legendary 409 big block V8 with dual four barrel carburetors and 11 to one compression was rated at 409 brake horsepower or the magic one horsepower per cubic inch. Joe, do you think Beachy's efforts in the Impala went some way to restoring faith in American cars in Australia? I think he certainly did. Mm. Uh, American cars in the 50s had this reputation for being big, sloppy, uh, not that good at handling, but yeah. just sort of rugged, dependable cars, but not much else. He added a bit of romance mm. and that they were back in town. I think that's what his biggest contribution was. Well, it was certainly a winner, but unfortunately, the big American muscle car proved an expensive beast to develop and chewed through huge amounts of cash as Beachy tried to overcome all sorts of issues from crankshaft seizures to gearbox failures and severe brake fade. Due to the crippling costs, Beachy only competed in a handful of meetings between 1962 and 63, but he certainly made each one of those a memorable occasion for the spectators that turned up in droves to see the big US muscle car upset the Jaguar juggernaut. Beachy's fierce battles with Bob Jane's highly developed Jaguar Mark II during this period are legendary. 
and proved that Norm's theories about Gurney's car were correct, as he won roughly two races from every three starts, which included the New South Wales and Victorian Touring Car Championship titles. Hope you're enjoying Shannon's Club TV. Why not join the Shannon's Club and share your passion for unique, rare and classic cars and motorbikes with other enthusiasts across the country? Keep up to date with the latest news, events and exclusive offers from Shannon. My name's Jeff Feeben, this is a Chevrolet Impala 1968. Bought it from a widow in Queensland when I was working in Harvey Bay. The widow wasn't offered very much from the local mechanic. I went around and had a look and thought, oh, this is just magnificent. So I bought a, another Chev and it was in beautiful condition. It had been well looked after. That was 1983 and it was about $2,100. Just oversized Holdens, good for parts, maintenance, uh, good for putting things in, plenty of room, comfort and as equal of anything was protection. You get a lot of protection in a big bus like this. Yeah, well this dink's got a little bit of a history. Um, my father was in the Navy and it was a reunion and he was taking in uh, a, an old friend of his, Richard Mugabe, the Governor General of Victoria. And he just had a little parking difficulty in the pylons up there in Port Melbourne. And uh, that was the history of the little dint. And I forgave him for that. I thought, well, he, he had a responsibility what he was doing. So uh, <laughs> this actually has done a wedding. Um, and it's been garage most of the time, so it actually hasn't had a lot of use. Uh, magnificent design, I think the, it's been reported on the Chev side as perhaps the best looking Chev they ever made. In its day, when I, I drove these cars for 30 years, just uh, it was just a pleasure and a delight, and uh, very comfortable, practical, easy to maintain. Had the auction two nights ago, we got a good price, uh, went to a good buyer, uh, but unfortunately going to New Zealand, so I'll probably never see it again. <laughs> We're back with Chris Borobon, National Auctions Manager for Shannon's. Chris, welcome to the show. Hi guys. There are two groups of Chevrolets out there. There's the original local cars, and they're a little bit special. They had Holden colours, the leather trim from the Holden Premier, and we're noticing a whole lot of imports that are quite different. Mm. What's going on in the marketplace? Yeah, there definitely is definitely two groups of uh, buyers out there. We, we've got the cars, the local production cars, which there's a real following here for mm. them. Uh, and they've maintained their value over the years. Because they're quite uh, distinctive. They are, that's yeah. right. They're a bit different. They're not, mm. uh, not very different to the American cars that were built there. Uh, but then we're also seeing some of the imports coming in that we, were cars that we didn't get here in Australia. Mm. The convertibles, the coupes. So, yeah, there, there is definitely two markets there. And Chris, I guess when you talk about coupes, I mean, in America, these early... Chevys were just so successful in the NHRA, super stock drag racing, big influence on people and of course Beachy running the car here too. How much of an influence does motorsport have on the desirability of these cars? It, it does have to an extent. I, I think probably the baby boomers remember mm. the, those, those days uh, with the drag racing and, and again with Beachy racing that 62 mm. uh, Impala with the 409 and it, it's probably one of my favourite, the, uh, you know, the, the bubble top 409s. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, 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 great beautiful. car. Chris, so the advice here is if you've got a good Australian car, keep it that way, keep it in original condition mm. and make sure it sort of stays in that category. And if yeah. you've got a US import, then keep it as that specification and for that heritage. Mm. Absolutely. There's two distinctive markets, uh, the Australian uh, delivered cars and the imported cars. So I think we, we've got to keep them that way. Mm. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Thanks, Chris. And don't forget, you can get all the latest auction updates on the Shannon's Club website. For memorable images of Norm Beachy's Chevy Impala in competition, visit autopix.com.au where you can choose from a database of over 760,000 photographs of Australian competition cars to find the one that's right for you. And of course, if you'd like to read the full story, you can find it here on the Shannon's Club website. So Joe, what was the legacy of the Holden built Chevrolets of the 1960s, do you think? Well, in that 10 years, the American cars introduced glamour and prestige that we hadn't seen here mm. before. There were new colours, new trims. It was a really exciting period and mm. it had to influence all the Holdens and then it spread right across the whole market. By 1970, as the American cars started to exit, mm. Holden was working on a statesman which took over from where they ended. So it had a pretty big impact on the Australian market. Yeah, it was quite a legacy, wasn't it? Certainly yeah. was. 
So thanks for joining us for this nostalgic look at the Chevy Bel Air and Impala, and we'll see you on the next edition of Shannon's Club TV. Thank you.